picture yourself as an alien in a strange world full of dangerous monsters. But you're a glass and steel tube protected from the outside. When all of a sudden, one of these monsters breaches the perimeter of the tube and enters your space. Now, that sounds like science fiction, but it actually happened to me. 20 years ago, I went to Johannesburg, South Africa on business. My wife came along, and we went for three days to Kruger National Park, which is a gigantic Connecticut-sized reserve for animals in South Africa. We arranged for a driver guide to get us up there. They actually picked up an Australian couple as well, and the five of us went off to Kruger National Park. Now, in the park, you go out looking in the morning, early morning and late afternoon, because the animals are active then. When you go out there, you see every one of the African animals. You see rhinos, and hippos, and baboons, and elephant, zebra. They're all out there, and they are free to roam around. And you're in your glass too, this microbus. Now one morning we got up at 6 a.m. to leave. Now the Australian couple sat in the back seat, we, my wife and I in the middle seat, the driver up front. Now the Aussie, I think he drank a six pack of Fosters every morning for breakfast. <laughs> he was sloshed the entire time with this drink. And his wife sat in the front seat to take pictures with him. We're going out in our glass tube, watching the animals. We pull into a clearing. And the driver points out there's a car in the clearing with a baboon sitting on the roof. The driver said, no, that's very unusual. The, usually the animals pay no attention to people. If you're not food or danger, they don't care about you. And they've learned that the cars are not food or danger. He says, I'll bet someone in that car is eating. And the baboon can see that. And that's why it's up there. Well, that was interesting. Well, we were in the clearing next to a river because there were hippos in the river. So we pulled parallel to the river. It happened to be on my side. We all went over and leaned out my window to look at the hippos. But my wife left her window open. And an adult female baboon jumped in her window <laughs> into the van. Now she jumped around. I'll call her Babette the Baboon. <laughs> well, Babette jumped around and ended up in the back seat with the sloshed Aussie. I could, I could swear he turned and looked and said, how do you look better at it? <laughs> well, since we got early in the morning, we got early in the morning, everyone brings a bag of food, snacks, nuts and things of that sort. Now the driver was almost panicking. He said, if that baboon wants anything, you can let her have it. If she bites you, your vacation is over. Well, she found the bag of food in the back seat that the Aussie couple had brought. Some fruit, nuts, and candies, and sat back and started eating all this stuff. And when a baboon eats, their cheeks puff out like this. Now, at first, we were all scared, silly, you know, because there's a baboon sitting about as one arm's length away from me. I'm in the middle seat and I'm in the back seat. But with this puffed out cheeks, popping all this food, it became funny after all. <laughs> Well, baboons don't live by themselves. They travel in troops, 30, 40, 50 baboons to a troop. Well, she's sitting back there with the Aussie guy. We're laughing now because of this funny sight. And a big male baboon comes up to the window, sees his girlfriend eating all this food, and starts banging on the window. The driver said, we've got to get out of here. So he gets in the van and pulls out to the roadway and we're followed by 30 or 40 baboons <laughs> traveling down the road. Now their car can outrun a baboon. So we eventually left them in the dust. And uh, about a half mile down the road, he pulled over to the side. My wife had a banana hidden away. She slipped it to the driver. And he opened the panel door, held the banana up. The baboon, Babette, saw the banana, leaped over the Aussie's lap. He threw the banana into the bush, and she went chasing after it. He slammed the door shut. He closed the windows. So we ended with 
no one injured, no bathroom <laughs> poop on the floor, <laughs> some food missing, but a great story that I've been telling for 20 years. <laughs>